Hello everybody, this is Paul, and with me I have Jackie today, and I want to thank Jackie for letting us uh, show what's going on here. Jackie, about one month ago, had a vena cava reconstruction, um, had surgery kind of anteriorly here. About five days after surgery, started to develop some significant axillary discomfort, pain over the shoulder, down into the shoulder blade, and started to significantly lose function in her arm. Um, loss of the ability to extend her arm and to elevate it and it's been very very uncomfortable since then. Um, so one of the things that, that we've noticed here is that she has a lot of neural tension so if we take the arm and we straighten her out she starts to develop some brachial plexus discomfort when we laterally tilt her head to the other side, it causes much more discomfort down the arm. And when she tilts this way, it's better. Um, in evaluating her, we did notice that she had this significant loss of motion. And she has this winging scapula. And it's coming out quite a bit, actually. So what I do when I'm suspicious of a long thoracic nerve palsy, I have the patient lift the arm on their own. So go ahead and try to lift that arm, Jackie, as high as you can, straight ahead in front of you. And you tell me when enough is enough, That's right good. about there. Okay, now bring it back down. The scapula is sticking right out. Okay. And then what I do is I hold the scapula in place. All right, and I'm going to have you try to lift that arm again. And as you can see, can you go a little higher? Less painful? Yeah, it's less painful and she gets a little bit better motion. So just go ahead and let it down. Just stabilizing the scapula tells me that that could be causing a lot of this inability to lift the arm up because it's just inappropriate glenohumeral kinematics. Um, but when I checked her reflexes, um, found that she had two plus reflexes on the left side. But when we check the right side, I want you to relax that arm. She is quite hyper reflexive on that side. Go ahead and relax that arm. We're going to do C5 here. That was just C7. And then we're going to bring that arm down. Okay, so we're quite hyper reflexive there. So with that being said, I have to be somewhat suspicious that there's something going on, not just peripherally, but centrally. Um, and then what I did was a Hoffman's test. And I don't know if, Andy, if you can come around this way. I want you to relax that arm. Okay, take a look at the thumb and forefinger here. I'm going to do a little Hoffman's. See the thumb and finger opposition it kind of comes together. She has that on the opposite side also, indicating to me that she has some central um, nervous system issues going on there too. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect with uh, her physician. We're going to talk about um, possible MRI of the cervical spine and EMG study to identify if this is a long thoracic nerve palsy. If she has a brachial plexitis, start some immediate treatment uh, on this. She's 54 years old which uh, starts to put her at risk of adhesive capsulitis if she's not moving that arm very well. Um, when we hold that arm right there, sorry, we try to push the arm in, her scapula sticks right out, so don't let me push, don't let me push. All of this inappropriate glenohumeral positioning causes weakness of the cuff. Um, so we're going to try to get on this right away. So thank you very much, Jackie, for letting us uh, show this. Uh, we'll be in touch with your doctor soon and uh, hopefully get some management for this. Okay. Thanks. Okay.